I'm pretty sure that if you asked anyone in the industry what they thought Sigma's role in the Elman Alliance was, they'd probably stop at lens development. Now that's not counting that Sigma has said they're working on another Foveon camera in the past. It just seems like Sigma is mainly a lens company in the eyes of most consumers. But today Sigma made an announcement that absolutely turns that on its head and makes us rethink exactly what the l -Mount Alliance is and is supposed to do. My name is Jaren Schneider with Imaging Resource and let's talk about the Sigma FP camera. So the Sigma FP was announced this morning and it is both a stills camera and a video camera, but it has a lot of features that actually makes it somewhat unique and stands out in a very crowded market. So Sigma has made a lot of cameras in the past, namely their small kind of odd shaped cameras you might remember from a few years ago. And then before that they even made DSLRs. But what made Sigma's cameras special back then was their Foveon sensor, the technology that they purchased several years ago. Well, this camera, the FP, doesn't use a Foveon sensor, which came as a surprise to most since that's been their bread and butter up until this point when it comes to camera manufacturing. Instead, Sigma here is using the traditional Bayer type sensor. It's a backside illuminated 24.6 megapixel sensor that Sony makes. It's probably very similar to the ones you see in the a7 III and the Panasonic S1, though it has likely been shifted around a bit to be specific for what Sigma is looking for. So this is a hybrid camera because it does take both stills and video. However, I think the more interesting parts about this camera stem on the video side. The sensor is capable of capturing full frame 4K video in 24, 25, and 30p. But what makes it special is that this camera is actually shooting in Cinema DNG, which is a raw video format. It can also shoot an MOV in all eye and GOP formats, but the one that's the most compelling is going to be that raw format. The camera is capable of capturing Cinema DNG in 8, 10, and 12 bit. It can record Cinema DNG straight to an SD card, but you're going to get the greater bit depth when connecting it to an external recorder. The two external recorders that are supported is one by Blackmagic and the Ninja Inferno from Atomos. What's also somewhat special about this is most external recorders on the market, at least in this segment of the market, use HDMI out as a way to capture 10-bit 422 profiles. The difference in the Sigma is it's not using HDMI out to record the raw video, it's instead using USB 3.1 or USB-C. So even though it does USB out for the external recorder, that's not to say it doesn't have an HDMI port, it does, so you still will be able to use that as well. The FP can also shoot in 1080 Full HD up to 120 frames per second, and there are several other uh, frame rates below that, but they are the pretty typical ones like 60p, 24p, 30, etc. When it is shooting in 1080, it's shooting in an MOV format at 422 8-bit. Dave Eschels was there in Japan during the actual announcement of this camera, and they made mention of different aspect ratios available inside the camera. So at launch, it's going to do full frame and super 35, but they also made mention of like those viewfinders that directors use to capture the the view of a frame and the many options that you'll have in that. So they say that they're adding more in firmware updates in the future, but what they are exactly, we're not quite sure. Uh, I wanna loop back and talk a little bit about the stills capability of this camera and some of the features that are kind of carryovers for still and video. Even though the video features on this are probably the most uh, enticing for you guys, um, there are some stuff about the stills that's worth mentioning. So when the Sigma FP takes photos, it can do so in 12-bit or lossless 14-bit compressed, which is considerable data for a photo. Sigma's autofocus system on the FP is actually a contrast-based autofocus system, and they use something called, let me take a look what it says, moving object prediction function. So it's apparently able to shoot moving objects uh, a little bit more accurately than just plain contrast based by itself. I'm willing to give Sigma the benefit of the doubt here, mainly because of what Panasonic has been able to accomplish with contrast based autofocus systems. Uh, now is as a good time as any to mention that the FP will not use a physical shutter of any kind. It will only be using an electronic shutter. The lack of a mechanical shutter means that the camera itself will be susceptible to rolling shutter, a problem that occurs when just the data can't come off the sensor fast enough. Now, we know that it's possible to do fully electronic shutter with very limited rolling shutter, and that's in like the Sony A9. So we'll see what they mean when they say they've reduced rolling shutter to a very minimal amount in the FP. 
Uh, the ISO on this camera is really unique. So it has a base range of 100 to 25,600, but it's expandable to the low end of six, ISO of six, which is a singular number that I've never heard on a camera before, and then up to 102,400. The other stuff that Sigma's put on here are some custom color modes that are designed to look Hollywood-esque. They've got a, a couple different uh, custom colors you can put on here, like orange and teal, and they, uh, they look like, they're cinema looks that are designed to mimic those which you would see in Hollywood. Something I really do want to point to is the actual design of this camera is pretty special. Like, I haven't seen this before, but instead of using a fan or having to build a larger body to sink heat better, uh, Sigma built this, this kind of uh, heat sink on the back of the camera in between the LCD and the sensor. And from what I understand, it is still weather sealed, but it has this way of dispersing the heat very quickly out the sides of the camera in between the LCD and the sensor. This is a cool design that I haven't seen anyone do before. You usually see either a full-on fan or some kind of a larger body that can sink the heat better. And uh, this, this is a pretty cool take on how to deal with lots of heat in a small body. All right, so let's talk about the broader context of this camera because this is an extremely crowded market. And what does this camera do differently that makes it somewhat of a player? And well, the main thing is obviously the size of it. It is an extremely small camera. It is the smallest full frame interchangeable lens camera on the market today. Sigma says they noticed that the market is kind of slowing down, but it's not because people have stopped taking photos and making videos. That's clearly still happening. So they say as long as that's still happening, there is a market left to tap. For Sigma, they kind of made this camera to be whatever you needed it to be in whatever situation you wanted. So that's why a lot of it is kind of modular. You have the base camera and then you have a bunch of accessories that you can choose or not choose to attach to it to make the camera into whatever you'd like it to be at the time. So if you're more interested in shooting stills, you can add a grip to it, you can add a flash to it. But if you want to shoot video, you can put it inside of a cage or mount it to a drone or put it on a gimbal. The, the size is really advantageous, especially for filmmakers who are using maybe equipment that wants to be smaller, or maybe you're shooting documentaries or run and gun type of stuff where you do want to try and keep your rig as light as possible. As far as like the way it's made and the size of it, it's kind of more of a competitor to like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera than it would be to like an S1 or a Sony a7 III, especially considering that it shoots raw video, which neither the Panasonic nor any Sonys do. The Nikon Z series is purportedly going to get a raw video feature, but we're not sure when that's coming out, only that Nikon has said that is eventually coming. So the Sigma will be the only camera aside from the Nikon in this kind of ILC compact hybrid market that will do raw video, at least for now. So even competing directly against the Blackmagic, the Blackmagic sensor is smaller, it's ISO, therefore its ISO performance is likely not as good, and also, the Sigma is designed to also take really great photos, which the Blackmagic isn't. Now there are some things that uh, are like light concerns for me that I just want to bring up because uh, it's not a perfect camera. There are some things you need to keep in mind. Firstly, and I'm sure you've noticed, it doesn't shoot high frame rate 4K. It has high frame rates as an option, but those are only available in 1080p. So the lack of 4K P60 is, you know, disappointing. It's not a camera that you can use for everything. It means it's going to have to slide into your kit and fill in the gaps wherever you are uh, shooting otherwise. I think the main selling point of this thing is the raw video, which in this market, not a lot of cameras can do. However, raw video, it sounds enticing, but it is incredibly cumbersome to actually edit. Not only does it make, take up a gigantic amount of hard drive space, but it also really takes a lot of computing power to properly edit that kind of footage. So while you do get a ton of dynamic range and like the full width of the, what the sensor can do, uh, it's, it's kind of overkill for a lot of people. And that leads directly into the next thing. This doesn't have a log profile, meaning unless you're shooting in its whatever color profiles that it comes stock with, you're not going to have the expanded dynamic range that Log offers without also getting the huge amount of storage capacity that it's gonna to take to shoot in RAW. Something else worth mentioning is that it only shoots in UHD. It doesn't shoot in Cinema 4K, so you don't get that widescreen look that you do on like the uh, Panasonic GH5, for example. And this is actually kind of weird, but additionally, like you can shoot at Cinema DNG in certain bit depths directly to the SD card, but 
at launch, the camera's not gonna be able to uh, read those files. So you can't do playback of Cinema DNG on the camera itself at launch. Sigma has said that they're gonna patch this with a firmware update uh, after launch, but it's a little odd that it doesn't come uh, to market with that feature. Uh, as a side note here, Dave uh, mentioned that at the very beginning of the presentation that he was at in Japan, affordability uh, was something that Sigma mentioned as a problem with most cinema cameras. And so the idea is that this camera will be quote unfor affordable, but that may be relative. We're not exactly sure what they mean by that and what affordable is. So I can't even really guess what I expect this camera to retail for. In the concept video, some of the shots that I'm showing you here, you can see that they're putting a lot of emphasis on the modularity and fitting this thing into many different needs. You can see it fitting on a drone or fitting it onto a tripod with multiple different types of lens arrangements and cages, that sort of thing. So Sigma's main emphasis here is that this camera is very adaptable to multiple situations. Dave, uh, I'm gonna read you something that Dave says here. Dave said, a constant theme was using it to build off of. So from the presentation, it was clear that the Cine part of its capabilities was aimed squarely at pros who'd build it into something versus a pocket camera for the masses. So a lot will obviously depend on the price point and there was no mention or even a hint of what that might be. All in all, there's a lot to be excited about with this camera because it is actually, which is just really, actually, I didn't think I'd be saying this, unique in the industry right now. Like there isn't really a camera that's quite like this. It's a full frame camera that does a lot. It shoots raw video in a really small compact package. Though I wasn't expecting Sigma to make a camera like this, it makes a lot of sense that when they did decide to make this camera, it was an L-mount camera. The more we see from this L-Mount Alliance, the more it makes sense of how much all three of these companies are really pushing it. Sigma is not just gonna make optics for the Panasonic and Leica cameras. They're gonna make their own camera that their own optics will work with, that also Leica and Panasonic optics will work with. It's kind of this whole ecosystem that feels a lot like Micro Four Thirds, but get with the benefit of having a much better sensor because of the size behind it. At the very least, the announcement of this camera really reframes to me what the L-Mount Alliance means. This is probably the most practical and coolest camera Sigma has made in, geez, a long time. So that's just my opinion. I wanna know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.